Welcome to the High Holy Days with Suburban Temple Kalami. Deb. Shana Tova, Rabbi. Shana Tova. It's so Usually to when, when we're on Zoom, it's one or the other. I know, and here we are together. It's good to be next to you. Yeah, you too. I've missed you. I've missed you. Shana Tova, everyone. Welcome to the most unusual high holy days we have ever ever had and here we are right. here we are i want to tell you just a tiny bit i'm going to tell you more in a few minutes about what is going to happen tonight you're going to see deb and i like this you'll see some videos you'll have an opportunity to use some technology and other things this is not just for you to sit on a sofa, but for you to participate and to truly be in the moment, to truly try to connect with 5781. And so we're going to move into our service by singing, by singing ha Hashivenu, let us return, let us bring ourselves into this moment. Absolutely. And I hope that while you're watching along, uh, I hope you're singing along too. Um, because, you know, no matter how you sound, uh, you're going to sound great to us. So <laughs> enjoy. Let's sing together. So one of the things that we are experiencing is being in our own homes and not being in our sanctuary. And I was asked, Rabbi, why are you not in your sanctuary? And my answer is because being in the sanctuary without each of you is too hard. But we have an opportunity here to make our own sanctuaries that to imagine that each screen is a small sanctuary that is connected one to the other to the other to the other creating a magnificent sanctuary throughout cleveland throughout the country and indeed perhaps all over the world 
And that is what we're doing this evening to talk about what these High Holy Days are like. I want to invite our president, Matt Lehman, to share some words with us. He will be sharing words with us about what this time means. And I'm pleased to ask him to share words from us for to us from, uh, from the sanctuary in our first video. Take it away, Matt. Shabbat Shalom and a special welcome to our Suburban Temple Kolami members, their guests, and anyone joining us for the first time on Rosh Hashanah. I wanted to talk about square pegs and round holes. One of my all-time favorite movie scenes is from Apollo 13, when Gene Kranz, the flight director, said, I suggest you gentlemen figure out a way to get a square peg into a round hole rapidly. According to NASA, technically the trouble was that the square lithium hydroxide canister in the command module would not fit the round opening of those in the lunar module environmental system. I'm sure Temple member, third, member Jonathan Litt could translate this for us, but for all of us, our world changed in March. And it seems like every day since then has been one continuous process of trying to fit square pegs into round holes in our homes, our schools, our places of work, and of course, here at Suburban Temple Kolami, we have been forced to figure out how to do things differently while sustaining our mission and values and our engagement with you, our temple family. We've correctly put the health and safety of our temple leaders and staff and of our members as our top priority, which has forced us to make difficult choices. But it hasn't meant veering from our Jewish role in our community and with you. Our entire temple leadership, Rabbi Van, our head of lifelong learning, Rabbi Shana, our executive director, Brett Shankman, our music director, Deb Rogers, deserve our gratitude for how they have responded to each challenge that was thrown at them throughout the year. They would not have been successful without the support of J.B. Davis, our marketing and engagement director, and our temple staff, Dale Hopkins, John Farragher, and Kim Levine. I also want to thank and recognize so many of our temple members who as first responders, members of the medical community, teachers, leaders of organizations or volunteers have helped our community through this time. It's also gratifying to see how many temple members have continued to stay engaged from Friday night services on Zoom, Saturday morning Torah study, book clubs and movie nights. We push the envelope as we should with a drive-in mitzvah day and when possible, take out Tuesdays on the lawn. The amount of work and preparation for these high holidays was massive and required dedication from our entire staff, but especially Rabbi Van and Deb Rogers, literally hundreds of square pegs trying to fit into hundreds of round holes. But as you have experienced over the last few days and will continue experience over the next weeks, this preparation is leading to unique high holidays that are memorable, engaging, and most importantly, meaningful as Jews. To go back to Apollo 13, you'll recall that a fundamental part of the film's message was how the mission changed from getting man to the moon to just getting the astronauts back safely. At Suburban, Temple, at Suburban Temple Kolami, our mission hasn't changed. We exist as a warm, welcoming, reformed Jewish community, building a vibrant Jewish future rooted in acceptance, spirituality, and creativity. To be successful in this mission, however, more than ever, we need your support. Speaking on behalf of the board, we recognize that this is a challenging time for all of us. Everyone is feeling the effects of constantly putting square pegs into round holes. However, our unique open doors membership model recognizes that individual circumstances can and do change. But the important thing being, you are part of our congregation and providing the support that you are able to in this time. As a congregation, we thrive when you are here virtually, or we hope in the very near future, in person. So 
as we begin a new year that is likely to be unique in so many respects. Let us hope it becomes, as Jean Cran said, our finest hour. I wish you and your families a healthy and peaceful new year. And then we get to a time when the holes and the pegs become round or square, just easier. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Matt. Thank you. We turn now to lighting our holiday and our Shabbat candles. And everyone has holiday candles because of our beautiful High Holy Day bags. And so we turn now to our beautiful slide deck, the reason that you do not need a moxor. And Where there is sadness, let us offer love. Where there is fear, let us reach for hope. On this eve of the new year, may we bring light to one another. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kichanu b'mitzvotav, v'tivanu, lehad ligner, shel shabbat v'shel yom tov. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Shehechianu vekiamanu vehigianu lazman hazeh. Amen. We continue with Kiddush, with the blessing over the wine. We lift this cup for the year that is gone, for the year that begins. May we meet it in strength, in unity, in hope. We lift life's cup and celebrate survival. So may we sanctify each day that is ours. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Barei Mechayim. So we turn now to announcing the new year. But first, Deb, I wanted to call attention to a few things that are really important. I do know that some people are having some audio issues, and I please know that we are working on them, although they might not be able to hear me say that, but we are working on the audio issues. And please just make sure that your computer speakers are turned on, that your sound is turned all the way up, and that if you can navigate around and make sure, I know that for me, when I was looking at the sanctuary, um, that the icon for mute was almost hidden by the beautiful artwork. So you may be muted by mistake. So try those things before you um, totally panic because I know that those are things that I do as well. And I wanna say just a few more things about the service and connecting the High Holy Day bags. So look at that. There was a little mute icon, mute icon will be just about- There you go. Here. <laughs> That was awesome, thank you. So we all received High Holy Day bags because we are trying to create a, 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 a sanctuary across the city. And you have this beautiful page, right Deb? Yes. This beautiful page is made by Deb because not only does Deb sing, Deb <laughs> is an artist and a great decorator. And why did we put this in there? I'm gonna be brief because not everyone can sit still and you might need to draw or write some words or just doodle. And throughout the service, I'll be offering some prompts to help you to just keep your mind in, in the service or keep your mind really thinking about what do the High Holy Days mean to you. Additionally, there are some coloring pages and for some fun, some bingo pages. So we Absolutely. want to keep you connected. 
we know that 5780 has not been what we wanted. And so we announce 5781 with hope, with hope in our hearts that it will be a better year. We turn to our year announcement video now. Elohenu velohe avotenu v'imotenu, yehi ratzon shenizkeh levirchotecha bishnat hamishim v'sheva shmonim v'achat. Our God and God of our ancestors, may we know your blessings in the year 5781. Eternal One, bless us and the whole house of Israel with renewed life, happiness, and peace, comfort and courage, resilience and strength. May the words of our heart be acceptable to you in the new year that stretches before us. We are forever grateful for this gift of life. Amen. Amen. So as we announce 5781, we move now into Baruch Hu and our first prompt. Baruch Hu is our preparation for the year. And so how will you stretch? How are you ready for this year? We sing together. Shema Yisrael, hear the words of the mystics. There is nothing but God. No place and no person is empty of God. The whole earth is suffused with God's glory. Hear, O Israel, God's hands are our hands. God's work is our work. God's voice speaks through us. God is one when we are one. Uf shoch becha, uf kumecha, uk shartam leho talya decha, vahayula totafot bene necha, uk tav tam amazuzot betecha, uvisha recha, lemahan tis keru vasi tem et komits votai, vitem kedoshim lelo hechem. Ani Adonai Elohechem, Asher Hotze Tietchem, Mea Rats Mitzrayim, Lihiod Lachem, Lelohim. Ani Adonai Elohechem. As we prepare for the Micha Mocha, our song of freedom and redemption. I share this beautiful reading and I invite you at home to read it with me. You have stayed long enough in this place, God said, time to go forward. 
turn your face to the future, believe that you can cross the sea and survive. Inside you is a Moses, within you Miriam dances, unafraid, lift your voice and sing a new song. We come to a really beloved moment in the service where Hashki Venu is our song where we ask God for protection. We ask God to ask us to provide shelter. And you see now on your screen something that you've never seen before in a service. And there's a typo on the bottom. It's M-E-N-T-I, menti. And in your, I'm going to ask you to take out a phone or a tablet. You're not going to let them use their phones, are you? I am going to ask you to use your oh phone. Oh my gosh. And we are going to create what's called a word cloud. And this word cloud is going to bring the Hashki Venu to life in a new way. The Hashki Venu is one of our oldest prayers. It's a prayer for protection, for shelter, for asking God to provide for us a Sukkot Shalom Aleinu, a shelter of peace, a shelter of wholeness. And in this year of COVID, in this year of fire, in this year of flood, how much we need this. So take your phone, take your tablet, go to menti.com, type in 923387 and answer this prompt. Describe your vision of a peaceful world. You can answer three times. And during our singing of Hashki Venu, you will see our suburban temple, Kol Ami, word cloud, begin. Oh, 
my gosh that was so cool are we going to save that and we can save we, it and we, put it up we can save that because we have the recording of this service i think i have some tears in my eyes that was extraordinary and i also want to point out that the voices of singing was our professional choir yes. whose faces we'll see in just a few moments uh, i want to let everyone know that rosh hashanah falls on shabbat so not only do we get this beautiful Sukkot Shalom um, on us, we also get the deep breath of Vayina Fash, of renewal of Shabbat. So let's turn to sing the Shamru and let's have a little bit of Shabbat.
We turn now to our Amidah, to one of the centerpieces of our service where first, if you are willing and if you feel comfortable, I invite you to rise in body and in spirit that there is, um, first we dig a little deeper in our prayers. We give uh, sanctity and honor to those who come before us, our forefathers and foremothers, all whose shoulders upon whom we stand, we say, give greatness. Uh, thank God for the greatness that great that God has. Excuse me. And also, we have to remember. That's why I re I remembered right in the middle of my recitation that we have special prayers for the High Holy Days. So if you go on automatic pilot, you're going to make a mistake. So follow the slides, right, Dem? That's excellent advice for me as well. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we continue with the Amida. Adonai sefatai tifta hu fi agita hilatecha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu velohe avoteinu v'imoteinu. Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leha, Ha El Hagadol, Hagibor, Vahanora, El El Yon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vekone Hakol, Vezocher Chaste Avot, Vimahot, who may be Geulali, Vnevenehem, Leman Shemo Beahava. Zoch Brenu Lechaim, Elechafet Bachaim, Vechot Venu Besefer Hachaim. Bechot venu vesefer, vesefer hachayim, leman cha elohim chayim. Melech ozer, umoshia umagein, baruch atadonai, magein Abraham veezra tzara. Amen. Atagi borle lamadonai, mechaye ha kolata, rav le hoshia, mechal kel chayim bechesed, mechaye ha kol berachamim rabim, so mech no flim verofacholim, umatir asurim, umekaye memunato, lishe ne afar, micha mocha pa gevurot, umido melach, melech me mi tu mechaye, umat miach yeshua. Mi chamocha el harachamim, so cher yetu rav lechayim berachamim, vena emahan atale hachayot hakol, baruch ata adonai mechaye hakol. Ata kadosh vishim chakadosh, ukedoshim bekol yom ya haleluha sela. Oh, you're muted. I think that's a bingo spot. I did that just for the bingo. Well done. I did that just for the bingo. Very clever. So we do, we turn now to a beautiful prayer that asks God to remember us, to connect with us, to lift up our prayers. Oh, 
There are so many who are struggling this year and so many who are feeling hard, but there are also times that we have found silver linings, that we have found things that were unexpected pleasures and unexpected blessings. And so I want to invite you to use the chat function and lift up those moments of blessings and gratitude that have been unexpected joys in this last year and in particular in this last month as we sing Shalom Rav. <laughs> that choir i know they're Didn't here michael, with us sorry go they're ahead. here with us and michael sounded amazing yes that was mike mckay our accompanist who yes. uh, also is a singer yes shalom song. shalom rav shalom means peace it also means wholeness and there are ways that we have found wholeness during this time and there are also ways where we have not 
found wholeness and where we are struggling. And there are so many we love who are in need of healing, whether it's a healing of body, a healing of spirit, a mental health healing. There are so many ways that we are struggling with illness. And so we take time now for our Misha Barach, for our prayer for healing. And again, I invite you to use the chat to lift up in prayer those who are struggling with illness of all types so that we know that this Suburban Temple Kolami family is lifting us up and giving all of us who are struggling just a little bit more strength and a little bit more healing. Now pause for a moment of silent prayer.
Here we are at the new year. How I wish I could proclaim it's 5781 and all our challenges and disappointments and fears would magically disappear. I tried to write a message of hope. I tried to bring inspiration to buoy us up. I typed page after page and deleted page after page. Because the Judaism that I love offers realistic, meaningful, spiritual guidance, not platitudes. Did you know that the oldest name for Rosh Hashanah is Yom Truah, the day of loud blasts, the day of the shofar? The symbolism of the shofar is not hard to unpack. A horn blast is the perfect way to announce a new year. The unusual and loud sounds are a great alarm clock, waking us up from our spiritual slum slumber. Some ancient images even portray the shofar as a coronation horn, reminding us of God's... Oh. Reminding us... Hmm reminding us of God's rule, excuse me. What has gotten buried over the years are powerful and poignant and necessary and radically different teachings about the shofar, which are from the Talmud that frame this year much, much more meaningfully. Through Hebrew wordplay, narrative interweaving and personal experience, the rabbis discuss the sounds of the shofar. What are the sounds the shofar are to make? After all, in the Talmud, they don't have an MP3 player. Are they long? Are they short? What are the combinations of sounds? What emotions should the shofar elicit? What do the rabbis decide? The shofar sounds like crying. The shofar sounds like mothers sobbing for the different fates of their children. The shofar sounds like Hagar, Sarah's handmaid, seeing Ishmael playing with Isaac, and Sarah does not approve. Sarah demands to Abraham that he send Hagar and Ishmael away. God agrees. Hagar is sent out into the wilderness with Ishmael and only a bottle of water. She puts Ishmael under a bush. She moves away so she doesn't have to watch him die. She lifts her voice and she weeps. She assumes that Ishmael has surely died, but God answers her. Fear not, God says to Hagar. I have heard the boy where he is. Come pick up the boy and hold him in your arms, for I will make a great nation of him. The shofar echoes her cries of fear as they become cries of relief and hope. The shofar's cry is for injustice. The shofar's cry is for compassion. The shofar sounds like our matriarch Sarah Sarah died immediately after the story of the binding of Isaac to try to understand this connection and the cause of Sarah's death. The rabbis wrote a midrash, a legend. And the legend is about Satan. And Satan, they said, was mad that Abraham passed God's test with the Akedah and to exact revenge at Abraham, Satan pays a visit, a visit to Sarah. And he says, haven't you heard? And she said to Satan, no. And Satan said to her, your husband, Abraham, has taken your son Isaac and he slayed him and offer him, offered him as a burnt offering on the altar. And immediately Sarah began to weep. She cried three cries and she howled three times. She died 
from grief. The shofar's cry is grief. The shofar's cry is fear. The shofar sounds like our role model, Hannah, a text we typically read Rosh Hashanah morning. Hannah, beloved by her husband, yet yearning for a child, goes to the temple in Shiloh to pray in desperation. Hannah sits in the great temple at Shiloh, bitter with grief, and she prays to God and cries a deep cry. She bargains and she makes a promise. Eternal God, if you take notice of your servant's affliction, if you keep me in mind and do not forget me, giving me a son, I will dedicate him to you for life. Hannah is blessed with a son and she fulfills her promise. The shofar's cry is the cry for a future that is different than our dreams. The shofar's cry is for hopes and goals that seem impossible. In these women's, in their keening, in their mother's keening, the rabbis heard the shofar. In their keening, the rabbis heard their open hearts, the bearing of their souls. This year, the shofar cries out, each note a falling tear. We cry for the grief. We cry for the loneliness. We cry for the illness. We cry for the frustration. We cry for the stuck. We cry for the losses. We cry for the anger. We cry for the injustices. I cried, I resisted these cries. I resisted the cries of the shofar this year. I heard it. I heard the shofar being practiced in my home, even on social media. I didn't want to give in to the tears. What if I cried and it hurt, but I didn't feel any better? And then I remembered, we are not new to tears, we Jews. Every year, year after year after year after year, we place tears on our tables during Passover. When we put salt water on our tables, we purposefully make tears. We taste those tears to remember the sadnesses of the past. We taste those tears to remember strength and vulnerability. We taste those tears to remember through our tears we know strength, through our tears we know resilience, through our tears we will learn possibility. According to the Rambam, according to Maimonides, the first aspect of the path of teshuva, of repentance, is crying. My friends, this is not a part of Rosh Hashanah. This is Rosh Hashanah. We learn this from the shofar. And this year, this year we taste tears on our cheeks anew. The tears of grief, of fear, of struggle, of anger, the tears of vulnerability, and strength, and resilience, and possibility. This year, we cry.
We turn now to Avinu Mankenu, a famous, famous beloved, prayer. beloved prayer. Avinu Mankenu also, also comes with some with difficult and interesting images, interesting images of, God. of God. Avinu, our parent, Malkenu, our ruler, even our king, as the word Malkenu comes from the word Melech. The Lubavitcher Rebbe used to encourage children to give themselves Hebrew names for a boy, Melech, and for a girl, Malka. Why would he do that? Why would he ask them to name themselves king or queen? Because he would teach them and he would say, you are the ruler over yourself. As we pray Avinu Malkenu, we renew this understanding. Avinu Malkenu, loving father, infinite power, gentle, forgiving, lofty, inscrutable, Avinu Malkenu, compassionate mother, omnipotent Lord, comforting presence, fathomless mystery, Avinu Malkenu, our rock and redeemer, life of the universe, close to us, always impossibly far, Avinu Malkenu, embracing, confounding, accepting confounding. our frailty, decreeing our end, Avinu Malkenu. None of these are none of these are true, none of them are true. Yet we stand as those before us have stood, summoned to judgment, longing for love. Avinu Malkenu. May these words be a bridge. They come from our hearts. May they lead us to you. Avinu We turn now to Alenu, that prayer that reminds us that it is our task to make the world a better place. May the time not be distant, our God, when all shall turn to you in love, when corruption and evil shall give way to integrity and goodness, when lies and bigotry shall no longer enslave the mind, nor idolatry blind the eye. 
So may all created in your image become one in spirit and one in friendship, forever united in your service. Then shall your dominion be established on earth and the word of your prophet fulfilled. Adonai will reign forever and ever. Banach nu karim, um ishtach avim umodim, lifnei melech machei hamlachim, hakadosh baruch hu, v'nemar v'hayadonai, lemelech al kol haaretz, Bayom hahu, bayom hahu, ye adonai echad. Ushemo, ushemo, ushemo echad. We turn now to our time of memory. There are stars up above so far away. We only see their light long, long after the star itself is gone. So it is with people that we loved, their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. But the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us. As we live our days, these are the ways we remember. And on this Rosh Hashanah, because it is also on Shabbat, we remember those, those taken most recently from our temple family in Shiva, Marian Ratnoff, and in Shloshim, June Greenwald. And we mark the yard sites, the anniversaries that fall, anniversaries of death that fall on this Shabbat. Morris Abrams, Myron C. Auerbach, Helen Einstein Bing, Corinne Cohen, Florence S. Garson, Arlene E. Gladstone, Betty J. Glazer, Dr. Joseph I. Goodman, Irma Greenfield, Ruth Hallie Lustig, Marie Hallie Newman, Harry H. Rose, Bruce B. Sherman, Sylvia Simon, Arthur H. Skull, Bernard J. Starkoff, Jean K. Stewart, Mabel Wodicka. Our griefs and sympathies are mingled as together we turn to the words of the mourner's Kaddish and we rise as able in body or in spirit. Yidkadal v'yidkadash shemei rabah v'yalma divra hirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayichon v'yomechon v'chaye t'chol beit Yisrael Ba'agala o vizman kari v'imru, amen. Yehe shmei rabah mevorach leolam almei almaya. Yit barach v'yish tabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit romam v'yit nase v'yit hadar v'yit hale v'yit halal shmei d'kudusha barichu le'elam min kol birchata v'shirata tush b'chata v'nechamata da'amiran v'yalma v'imru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shamaya, the chayim aleinu veoko yisrael, the imru, amen. O se shalom bim romav, huya a se shalom, aleinu veoko yisrael, the imru, amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and give comfort to all who are bereaved, and let us say together, amen. Amen. So, Deb, let's talk about our closing song. Yes. Yeah, so um, as you saw a little bit earlier, we had uh, some choir pieces in there uh, as a wonderful surprise, perhaps, for you. Um, our closing song actually includes not only our professional octet, but also our Kolot Kolami, our volunteer choir, uh, all singing together. So... Uh, and, shall you know, we listen to them? Wait, I actually want to, I want to say some thank yous first. Okay. Really quickly. I want to thank you, Deb, for all your work. You did an extraordinary amount of work. I want to thank Zone Entertainment and all the, and Jeff, Dick, and all of the staff for amazing. And the staff of Suburban Temple Call Me, all of our 
people that we work with every day and all of these incredible Suburban Temple Kolami members who are here with us, who have made every screen a mikdash ma'at, every screen a sanctuary. Right so, back at you, Rabbi. Thank you. You're welcome. Now we should say. May God bless you and keep you. May the light of God's presence shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God lift up each one of us. May God be with each one of us on this new year. And may God bring each of us shalom, peace, and wholeness. Amen Amen. Shana Tova, Shabbat Shalom. Shana, <laughs> <laughs>